You're now listening to Love Yourself with Sarah from WMCR Studios. everyone and welcome to our new episode of your self-love journey show in today's episode we will talk about self-acceptance and about tips and tricks to increase your self-love i am sarah the host of your show whenever you find yourself tired drained trying to keep up with things to fit in to blend in be more at pace with yourself or even hating your body you are using vital life force that could use for other important things in life society taught us that the road to happiness is changing ourselves and covering up any imperfections that do not fit in today's standard and this creates a lot of pressure for women to just breathe or even to anyone trying to fit in. For others, it shows up in accepting less than they deserve in careers, love, relationships, and in life as a whole. Self-love must be turned up if we are to make it. Today, we're gonna talk about few short tips that can help us practice self-love and self-acceptance. First, be selfish. Instead of trying to change yourself, keeping up with the Joneses, measuring yourself against other people's standards, it's much easier and healthier to create your own standards and your own success materials. The first level or step to do this through self-love. Loving yourself enough to a degree that may sound selfish, but it's not. It is you. It is you looking after yourself. It is you fulfilling your own highest potential, taking care of your own health and well-being first. Because your well-being will overflow to help, inspire, and help others. So don't be afraid sometimes. Put you first. Second, get rid of needing or believing that you need to change yourself. The second level is self acceptance. It is realizing that instead of fighting with yourself to change yourself or to keep up with anything or chase anything, you can just drop into nothingness and realize that you already are everything that maybe you can just love and accept yourself just the way you were and any change will naturally and effortlessly evolve from there just like a flower is not hustling to become beautiful it just is third have self love acceptance it can also be expressed from yourself to yourself okay self love and self acceptance actually change your mood and give you confidence Affirmations change the negative message stored in your mind that cause you feel depressed, have self-doubt, or anything that dims your beautiful light. So self-acceptance is the key to happiness. If you judge your self-worth with what you have achieved, you will be dis- disappointed when things turn haywire in today's fast moving world people have time for nothing not for even themselves 
the modern lifestyle is so demanding that we are forgetting the basic of healthy living that were taught and practiced by our own selves. We are so preoccupied by our belief systems that knowingly or unknowingly we are heading towards self-destruction. The experiences and expectation and inspirations of the young generation are so high that even a small failure in their fulfillment push the individual into a dark and sad. We all say that we accept ourselves and our life the way they are, but actually we don't. Self-acceptance is very important in making the journey of life brighter and happier. It is vital to accept whoever whatever, wherever you are. Self-acceptance is definitely the process of believing and loving unconditionally yourself. Loving the part of you that is more than just your name, your failures, or your success. Accepting yourself the way you are first and then try to work on your faults try to improve yourself stop criticizing yourself once you find some time from your schedule to look within you will find that you have a number of strengths and weaknesses in yourself accept them accept your weaknesses and once you do that only then you can make efforts to bring about a change say to yourself I love myself. I like myself. Try to build and maintain your self-esteem. Your self-acceptance is the first step toward expressing love for yourself. Acceptance is not stasis. It's not sinking into mediocrity or making a home at rock bottom. It's not the deciding to stay as you are forevermore. Acceptance is not arrangements. It's not the belief that everything about yourself is perfect and does not need a change or improvement. It's not the rash, distorted beliefs that are really cover up for insecurity. Acceptance is not necessarily even self-love. It's not the adoration of the self. It's not luxurating in the self. It's not about venerating your own existence. Acceptance is not being accepted by others. It's about the self. It's not about finding people who say you're great just the way you are. No. It's not about letting the world do the work for you and build your self-esteem on your behalf. You cannot outsource this type of work. Acceptance is something quieter and calmer. It is the mountain you climb, only to find the view makes you forget the ascent. It's getting up in the morning without screaming at the day. It's doing makeup without bemoaning the face underneath. It's night without the agonizing panic attacks at the thought of another day in solidarity confinement with the self. It's learning to look people in the eye again and to just be around them. You are what you are. You don't, can't, need to be anything else. You can always improve, but you have to get real about the underlying self first. There are pros and cons, facts and incorrect beliefs, but living matters so much more. Time passes and you get better at living. It is easier if you treat it as a skill, because it is. Acceptance is never surrounder, never defeat. 
never an event, never a victory. Acceptance gives you permission to practice kindness with a person you have historically been the least kind to. If you give it a real try, you will see how the crazy minds get lighter. Self-doubt shakes off, shame disappears, hating yourself becomes a rare phenomenon. But you are human. Slowly, your belief about yourself shifts from less than to enough, from powerless to empowered. And when you do make a change, like losing weight, let's say, you have the perspective to see that hating yourself never made you any thinner. Opting up on yourself never counted for anything. I see the practice of self-love as having three distinctness facts. Self-acceptance is the most terrifying thing is to accept oneself completely. Human beings all have shadow and light. It is much easier to love our light, the parts of ourselves that are accepted and enjoyed by others. But our shadows must be included and accepted as well if we are to come to wholeness. Shadows are not bad parts of ourselves. They are simply what's unknown or repressed. They are in the dark and because of this, they can sabotage us when we least expect it. Self-acceptance is a process of drawing all parts of ourselves into the light for examinations, understanding and ultimately acceptance. None of us will ever be free of our shadow sides, our jealousy, rage, short temper, or whatever they might be. That's not an honest or even desirable goal. The movement is toward meeting and greeting our shadows. That's when they lose power over us. That's when they merge with our light and keep us humble, curious, and of course, human. Human emotions are messy and often social paraphyse are probably the hardest parts of ourselves to accept. But our emotions are simply messengers. Shooting the messengers does nothing but keep us from our own truth. Fear comes to us to warn us of potential danger. Gold is the manifestation of our inner molar compass. Anger comes to warn us of the injustice or unfairness. They all have their purpose and they all have value. Learning to talk with our emotions and accept their message is the compound of self-love practice and self-acceptance. Compassion is made of two words, come, which means with, and passion. So compassion, whether given to others or ourselves, means to feel with passion. Compassion is a practice and it is more than empathy. It is definitely not pity. Compassion realizes that we are all human. Compassion recognizes that light and understands shadow. It does not deny. Compassion says, I feel the pain you're going through and I understand that if this, whatever it is, disease, loss, trauma can happen to you, it can happen to me, can happen to any of us and you are not alone. The more we accept the truth about others, the more truth we make space for in ourselves and vice versa. Instead of I never 
we start realizing that I could, I do, I have that within me. Compassion begins self-compassion as we do for others, we do for ourselves. The third faces the third faces is self-trust. And it has probably been the hardest for me. I think, or I used to think, all the answers were found in books. I believed in authority and trusted authority figures. Luckily for me and my own journey to self-trust, these people and institutions have failed me enough to stop placing my trust where it doesn't belong. We have an issue in our culture of equating value with popularity. We think that credibility comes with the same name, the stage, the title. We get starstruck by personal coaches and motivation coaches. I did all of that. I have sat at the feet of many great teachers. I even gleaned some wisdom, but when the answers, approval, permission, and validation we seek do not exist in any one person or out in the world, we become looking inward, seeking a higher personal authority. These humans out there playing the role of healer, guiders, coaches, they are only human just like me and you and not all of their wisdom is right for us so we have to walk our own path wisdom repeated is not the same as wisdom embodied the faces of self-love means to begin trusting in your own personal authority know where you begin and someone else ends remember that you are enough. Value the information from your heart and intuition as much as anything you can read in any book. And claim your severity, your ownership over your whole self, your body, your emotion, your truth, and your life. Finally, your journey is up to you and how you choose to take it for the struggles and falls that bring you down. That is your own power that no one can ever take it away from you. Please know you are stronger than you think and braver than you know. Moving forward, I have personally committed myself to a life long journey of self-acceptance and the first step to that journey was admitting to myself that that is it something that needs to be a part of me a part of my life in order to feel secure in my own mind and well-being we are all capable of so much and admitting that to ourselves is the first step in the right direction toward peace and progression in self-acceptance. That was our podcast for today. Thank you so much for listening. Again, I am Sarah from WMCR Studios. Talk to you next week. Have a great day.